both my parents were from abroad and um, they always encouraged me to be creative. Um, my family, my brothers, my sister, everyone was always doing something creatively, uh, whether it was uh, making music, uh, piano, drums, guitar, painting, drawing, you name it, something was always happening. My mum was writing short poems. And so, you know, for me, being creative was part of, of normality. So I was born in France and I grew up in France. Um, I was a very, from an early age, a very big uh, book uh, reader. And my mum was, um, she was very much the instigator of all this. Uh, um, and from an early age, yes, I started to create those world when I was reading those books. And I think that's where it all began. <laughs> I always wanted to travel. I went, oh, that was my big... If as a kid, I always said to everybody, I will be traveling the world. And that was my dream. Um, and when I reached the age of 20, I decided to go for a summer job and spend the summer in England. And this is where I met Anthony. She was um, late 18 and we met in uh, my hometown of Portsmouth where she'd come to improve her English. And we shared something which was um, a, a love of cinema. And I think just in general, a cultural thing um, that was happening. She was from south of France, which was a world I didn't really know much of apart from in cinema. So for me, there was a kind of a dream uh, come true aspect to that. I'd always wanted to be in those French films that I loved from that period and from that part of the world. So uh, we kind of hit it off pretty well. And um, and I, I, I kind of basically introduced her to um to the world that i was creating which was uh, the world of short films and she was doing something else in her studies but i i managed to talk her into um to coming on board with me and helping with what i was trying to create and uh, one thing led to another it was like two boat meeting in the night <laughs> we kind of shared a lot of um, love of films, me from obviously coming from France, I had a different uh, filmography. Um, but Anthony already had that love of a European cinema. So um, we shared immediately a lot of um, common love uh, for films. A common language was talking about films, <laughs> just sharing titles. By the time we were in our late 20s, we were living in Paris and um, having an amazing time working on various projects, commercial projects, um, with very humble beginnings, but I guess a meteoric rise um, through some of the most important clients and brands um, in France. So um, early on, uh, when we were um, doing these projects and living this Parisian lifestyle, um, we had aspirations of just having an uh, opportunity to make better and bigger and more incredible things. And um, we did a project for a company called Eurovia, who build roads, amongst other things. And uh, they had an amazing script that came in. And it was a defining moment because the script was, um, it was a spot that was all taken from the perspective of a road. And the only way to really do it without post-production and within the time frame was to do it for real. So I came up with the idea that we would build a road in glass. And I worked with an engineer um, and that's exactly what we did. And it was a, a crazy idea, but it, it worked. And um, the commercial was a, a really great success and we won the Strategy Grand Prix. And it, it defined a whole new uh, moment for us. We'd made some inroads into working in the US um, 
within a number of years of working in France. And one of the scripts that, that came along, it was one of those moments where you knew that if you did this script and did it well, it was a defining moment once again. And the script was um, for Nintendo. You know, we did whatever we could to win that job. It was it was just bonkers. We built everything for real, did everything in camera as much as we could, and uh, and defined this this world uh, for Nintendo, this crazy concept, um, which was based on a true story of the kids running out of school in order to be the first to get the Nintendo, the new Nintendo editions, the new Nintendo games, and the script was brilliant. We managed to do it as well as we could. And that went on to win a bunch of awards, including um, Clio's for Best Direction and Best Cinematography. For many years, when we got a project in, um, traditionally, uh, putting a treatment together would um, would also, you know, would always be a kind of a big affair because, you know, you have to be a writer, you have to be an art director, you then have to put this together. And we started to split roles and Valerie would often go off and do the visual part of it. And in, in the original days, um, that would involve going to libraries and bookstores and pulling out these amazing, you know, books of photography or locations or ideas. So we still have a great library um, at home. But these days it tends to be done on the internet. It tends to be through research. And we also engage um, the help of other people, a small team. Um, and Valerie tends to lead the visual part of that. And she's, off, she's always looking for, for something that will inspire us. see I see things in people and um, that in that in the cast in a casting situation I, I find really exciting I mean I love this the whole process of casting I love meeting people and and, and what excites me is uh, finding characters um, I find a lot of the time uh, I'm casting because people are character they come with baggage they come with um, uh, first of all, it's an appearance, but it's also an attitude, and and um, I find it exciting and um, to find the people for the character that we need. Um, so it's always a good moment. We love it when people have a good time. Uh, during our shoots and it, it turns out to be a great experience that's what we want we we want people to enjoy it um, we want it to be something memorable um, we want them to walk away and you know and come together um, and feel like we've been a great team So when we were doing the, the spot for Club Med, um, which involved um, filming across four continents, all from helicopter, and, you know, we'd, we'd been asking to have communication between the helicopter and the ground um, for ages. And finally, you know, the guy turned up with some radios. But, you know, the day before we were filming, he forgot to charge them. So we had no communication at all. Um, once again, and I'm in the helicopter, and I was on the ground, um, and I was trying to uh, uh, organize or to think, because we didn't have a radio, uh, what it might have needed uh, in the frame for some of the shots, such as the one on the beach where I could. Um, we had all these uh, different things already so when the helicopter looked like it was in the right position we could uh, throw in such as horse a bunch of horses uh, boats ski jets 
um, people. And I can see, you know, where the horses are. I can almost see where Valerie is and where we're filming this beach. And I'm thinking in my mind, send the horses now, now, please send the horses. And suddenly the horses are on the run. It's a perfect timing. And I managed to film it and we got the shot. And the shot's beautiful. It's in the final cut. But I'm, I don't know what happened there. It was almost like we were communicating um, without radio. I think what it is um, with Valerie and, and myself is that because we've got the film in our mind, because we know what we want to achieve, or at least the direction that we want to go in, that even when we're separated, you know, and I'm in the air and, you know, and Valerie's on the ground. Um, what, what's beautiful about that is that we still somehow managed to communicate that um, because we were on the same page. And, you know, and when she sent those horses and I'm filming and I'm in the helicopter with uh, um, Philip Pifto and the pilot, and you know and we're kind of like going into this move and it's like a hinge move and i'm just in my mind i think i was actually vocalizing i was saying send the horses send the horses and suddenly there's the horses on the gallop running through the uh, the waves crashing on on the shore and it was perfect it was just brilliant and you know i i, I don't know how that works exactly but that's how two people communicate when they don't have direct communication is because they're on the same page. They have the same um, idea, they have the same focus, and it looked magical. So when we went to Iceland to shoot the commercial for Shivas, that was another amazing experience with um, landscape, nature. I mean, it, it felt like we were on a different planet. I mean, from the moment you land in Iceland, you are in total alien landscape. It's very raw. And um, I think we must have been completely naive uh, because we had no idea. I mean, it's, it should be obvious. If the place is called Iceland, it's made of ice, it's going to be really cold. And we turn up there and it must have looked like we were going on summer holiday because we, we got out of the, the van and we immediately realised, Valerie and I, that we were so ill-equipped for this scout um, that, uh, that we might as well be wearing nothing. We might as well have no clothes on. It was so cold and so freezing and howling, yet spectacular at the same time. Um, I, I just, I mean, after that, when we returned to shoe, before that, we went to the shops, we bought the thickest, um, you know, most arctic equipment we could possibly get. Shoes, jackets, gloves, everything, the whole caboodle. Um, so we didn't make the same mistake twice. So we found the most beautiful texture to, um, for the commercial. Uh, for even for the product, we did gorgeous back shots of the bottling, amazing uh, ice. Um, and then to shoot a whole cast of guys that were, uh, they, they were meant to enjoy a weekend f uh, fishing together uh, in this amazing uh, landscape. It was a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun working uh, with a great bunch of uh, actors that we had cast in Paris. Um, and we really uh, worked out together this magical uh, moment uh, in the middle of this exceptional landscape. There are certain things that happen on screen uh, visually uh, that are almost impossible to put into words. If you think about the nature of cinema, cinema isn't just about words, it isn't just about concept or even storytelling. Um, it, it's about communicating a mood and a feeling. It's 
important to remember that at the end of the day, this is also a number of people coming together um, to work together um, and to, to make it safe, to make it a good um, experience for everyone involved. Uh, you know, it would be a real shame that if we had a great commercial, but everyone was just completely uh, miserable by the end of the process. So we'd always try to keep the feeling that um, that you know that everyone has enjoyed it, that it's been fruitful, that it hasn't it hasn't felt laboured. It's felt like it was something that was uh, a good thing to be part of.